The vision at Central Park was to provide sustainable energy and water services. We manage all of the water that is within that community and passes through that community and we recycle that water and we reuse it. We minimise its use and we manage its use. And then energy as well, we take a resource that comes into the site and we produce you know, several forms of energy, thermal as well as uh, electricity. Water and energy in precincts is really only emerging. We're starting to see some in the UK, we're starting to see some of those in, uh, in the US and Canada. Um, and Brookfield, our, our parent, is, uh, has delivered a lot of those. A water and energy combined, a self-sufficiency within a precinct is emerging. This is quite different, you know, it's quite a different way of doing things. The water recycling component here at Central Park is important because it's such a large capacity treatment plant, one million litres per day capacity. It's one of the largest plants of this kind in the world. It actually has the potential to supply water to other neighbouring sites which means that it could be a net positive water development. The City of Sydney aims to reduce our reliance on the city's drinking water system. By 2030, 30% of our water supply will be from alternative or recycled water. The membrane bioreactor technology, it's a new technology, but it's particularly enabled there to be smaller scale systems. So rather than having to have a very large plant that is just not possible in this inner city site, you can have a smaller plant in New South Wales, there's the Water Industry Competition Act. It's enabled the private sector to access water infrastructure. It will be providing water for several thousand people on a daily basis, uh, and that is like a small town. The recycled water is being used for all the non-potable uses, so that includes the irrigation of the green wall and of the parks and gardens. It's also being used for the cooling towers, for the laundry, and also for the toilet flushing. The benefit of these systems to cities is that they're able to not only realise their vision, but they're able to reduce cost, improve livability, offset carbon, and reduce their emission, reduce their reliance upon other communities to provide them with resources. What we're trying to do is ensure that they are self-sufficient. I think the sustainability aspects of Central Park are very appealing. Increasingly it will become more important as we experience climate change. It's particularly important that we have examples and case studies like this pioneering, but it's also demonstrating that this is a risk-free, highly effective way to produce and save water. We're finding that a lot of people are starting to value this way of doing things because of the intangible benefits and they underpin other initiatives which might be greening of cities, green roofs, green walls, underpinned by water. And what we're finding in, when you're looking at water and energy, greening a city can reduce the energy load of those buildings and that city and so we get a benefit for energy as well as communities get a pleasant place to live, a lower heat island effect, fresh air, all these benefits. Central Park Water Recycling Facility has demonstrated what's possible in a highly urbanised environment. We're hoping that in our other infill urban development areas we can implement similar systems. The sustainability initiatives that underpin Central Park increase the value of those properties, increase the sale price. We also have a holding and an increase in value for those people who buy into that community. So, so both, both benefit from that. There have been studies that have shown that there is an increase in value by being able to look across a park or to look across a lake uh, and we are underpinning all of those kind of initiatives. The example that we see here at Central Park shows us what the future could be like. A trend to having more of the wastewater treatment and the stormwater and rainwater capture closer to source, using all the different water sources more efficiently and reducing the high cost of transporting uh, water and wastewater.